You added a lot of transfers. Yes. Um, obviously, it's kind of the theme from some of the position coaches that seen that there is bounce back is kind of the term or hunger or second chance. I guess yeah. was that kind of the tenet you were trying to find within these guys when you got to know them, that they had that want to to have a to take advantage of a second yeah. chance? You definitely want to know they love football and they're hungry, right, for that opportunity. I mean, you think about it, why would you get a transfer anyways? You're going to get a transfer because he's probably graduated somewhere and wants more playing time. Uh, or maybe someone has been injured and they lost a spot and now they want to go somewhere where they know they can play. So playing time's one of them. The other one is to your point, like, whether it's, you know, a guy like Romello who played as a true freshman and did some good things and got hurt the last game, probably missed out on a lot of time, so didn't really get the opportunities last year. So it is a second chance for him, and there was a lot of other guys. And so um, there is something to perspective. And when someone has an opportunity and maybe it doesn't go the way they want or they feel like they didn't do it the way they needed to and they get another chance, hopefully if you got the right kind of makeup, you'll take advantage of that because, um, you know, it's so hard because a lot of these guys, as you saw, almost every one of those transfers was four stars or this or that. They were really highly recruited out of high school. And maybe for whatever the variety of reasons is, it didn't go the way they wanted. So there's a humility to that and now saying, okay, I get an opportunity to go somewhere and I get you know a second chance. And, and so sometimes that can work to your advantage. You talked about the number of guys that are already on campus. How big is that to get them in here, to get them for spring when they're, and some of them are familiar, but for most of them learning a, a new yeah. system. It's really big in the transfer world. I mean, it, it, it's big in high school. You know, anytime a quarterback comes mid-year, or think of a guy like Alex Kilgore. We lost some depth at linebackers, so I don't know if he can play as a true freshman or not, but being here in the spring certainly helps that. But sometimes even high school guys, it helps them, but it still takes a year. But in the transfer world, like, they get the entire spring to get in our weight program to learn the offense and defense to have those 15 practices, but most importantly, connect with the team from a chemistry standpoint. And so of the 19 mid-year guys, 15 of them being transfers, that's a big deal. And, um, you know, because only two of the transfers that have committed to us so far aren't here yet. And um, so I think it's, it's a really, really big deal in the transfer market. You mentioned about half and half transfer in high school. Did you and your staff go into building this class with a specific number in mind of how many veteran experienced guys? And if so, how did you arrive at the number that you yeah. came up with? We did not have like a total end number. Um, obviously the way the, the, the rules have changed, there's not a hard cap anymore. Uh, that's why I say we may not be done with a couple potential, you know, uh, May, June type transfer additions. You just, we'll see how it goes. There's flexibility there. We, we still want to, Create as a philosophy of base through the high school ranks, specifically out of Texas. You know, you saw 16 majority are from Texas. You know, I don't know if that number could be, that number could change every year, but you still have to, you know, build your roster through the high school foundation. When it came to the transfer piece, we looked more looked at our roster. And that's what I mean by now with the transfer and all the roster turnover every year more than it used to be. You kind of got to look at it year to year. You can project out, and anytime you can get a P.J. Williams, who has four years. That helps you now and for the next three or four years, right? But sometimes you got to go get a Jordan Miller that just helps you now. So you have to balance that. The more years, always the better. Um, but what we kind of looked at is what do we need in 2023 to be a better football team? On defense, where are the areas we need to address? On offense, where are maybe the holes we need to fill with guys we lost or areas we think we need to be better than we were a year ago? And so we just looked at here's what we need to address. Let's go try to find that and find the right fit. And if it's one guy, great. If it at a position, if it's four guys, great. You know, once we have enough, we'll stop. But like, we weren't trying to reach and just take people to take people. Everyone we took, we felt like fit a need, specifically in the transfer piece. Um, and so there wasn't a total end number inside. It was like, let's go get players that make us better, especially in the areas we either need depth or we need to replace guys that can come in and play right now and not wait for them to develop, like say some high school guys have to. With the 2024 class, uh, you guys are off to a really nice start. I know you can't talk about them, but with the buzz around the school right now, with everything going on, uh, how is it getting into that you know, recruiting class already and just the responses you yeah. guys are getting? Well, we have a lot of momentum. It's a good time to be here. You know, Obviously, the school's in great shape. The city's off awesome. We've been winning you know, for multiple years now. We're building a $110 million facility. So there's a lot of really positive things um, that, you know, SMU is already a national brand, but it's helping us with that for sure. Um, 
I think at the end of the day, we're still, like I said, going to build our roster through the high school ranks. Um, every year may be a little different than others based on who leaves and all that your roster. It starts there with us, but you know the way things are now, you're definitely more selective, and I think we're fortunate right now where we are and, and how things are going that we have a lot of really good players that we're interested in, also interested in us. And so I think you're going to see, I don't know, I can't speak for everybody else, but for us, like, who knows, maybe in June we have 10 or 15 guys committed, but maybe we have five, and that's okay. You know what I mean? Like, um, every year is different, but we want the right guys here, and, and we're going to set our sights high. I know coaches maybe don't talk about stars or rankings, but you mentioned in there, hey, we did have the number one group of five class. What does that mean to have a ranking like that, and just you know, yeah. how does that help move the forward? It creates momentum, you know, with your fan base. It creates momentum uh, in recruiting because I think you heard Coach Brewer in there say good players want to play with good players. That's really where it stops. All it does is really just mean we should have we, we better go out and produce. If we supposedly got all these good players, then we need to have a good football team. There's a lot more to it than that. You got to become a team. You got to stay healthy and all those things. Um, we don't pay attention to the rankings in terms of making a decision. Do we take a guy or not based on his ranking? Um, you know, like I told the staff the other day, we want to go out and get guys that we feel are four and five stars. If they're a four and five star already, great. If they're a one star, it doesn't matter as long as that's what we think they are. Um, but it does help perceptually, um, both for momentum in recruiting. You know, like I said, if you get two or three really good players in a class, more people want to come play with them. And so it helps from those standpoints, for sure. When you have a day like today and you and your coaching staff talking about all these new players and everything they do well, what kind of feedback have you gotten from your returning players who see the, the new yeah. cavalry of talent coming to town? We're honest with them. You know, we said, hey, we're going to go out and we're going to try to add value to our team. It's, it's your team. Every year we're going to bring in new players from high school, it doesn't matter, it happens everywhere around the country, right? And competition's a big part of what we want to be built on here. So we can't be scared of competition, it makes everybody better. Uh, but we're honest with them. We're gonna bring in as good a player as we can to add value to this team. And it's not because we don't love you or we, lo it, we love everybody. The way they come in, everybody makes everybody better. And so if it works the right way and you bring in the right guys, they make your team better, but it also elevates the level of the guys on your team. And now you got some really good competition and it hopefully, if it elevates the level of the play of the guys on your team and you brought in the right guys, you can play more guys. You know what I mean? Because I know on defense, defensive coaches want to play more than 11 guys. They want to run D lines off and on. They want to stay fresh throughout the game, especially the way it's played now on offense. And I know for us, we throw it deep a lot. It's good to put a fresh receiver in there or a fresh back in there. And even last year, having more than 5 0 linemen helped us. So it can go really, really well if everybody embraces it. But that's what I kind of said in there at the end. You still build programs, but more than ever, you're building a new team every year. And that's going to be the biggest part of are we successful or not is do we take our current guys who I feel like we have a good culture on our team from last year. And then we got all these new guys coming in from high school, college, and all over the place. And how quickly can we become a team and mesh well together will determine how good we are. We got to meet uh, Maurice Crum up there for a bit. Um, when you guys went through the hiring process for that spot, I mean, what stuck out about him and, and what does he bring to the table yeah. from your end? Well, I mean, you can just hear him speak in there. He's just a very um, low-key, confident guy. I think he's all business. I think he relates well to the players. He's got a great resume from playing at Notre Dame to where all he's been coaching most recently at Ole Miss, Western Kentucky. He's been a coordinator. And I know when Coach Simons was looking to fill that spot, he had a lot of options, a lot of flexibility with what he wanted to do. I think we were just looking for the right fit for our defense. And, you know, they've had a connection in the past. I know he's close with Coach Hunley, Coach Tibbs, so he knew some guys on our staff, and that matters. And so when we had the opportunity to, to maybe add him to our staff, it just made sense. And, you know, so far a few weeks in, I mean, he's, he's been great. He's fit right in. Aside from the secondary, not a lot of one and done immediate fix in the transfer portal guys mm -hmm. um, throughout the team. I guess for this cycle, how important was it not only to get guys that, like you said, that could help in 2023, yeah. but guys that you can maybe take them, you know, ball of play, mold them, and for 2025, get some talent yeah. in there? I think, like I said originally at the beginning, like you always want the more years, the better, right? Because you've got more years to develop them and then obviously be a part of your team. But there are certain times where if you can get a really good player that's a difference maker, he's only got one year, it is what it is. But yeah, we, because like I said earlier, you have to address your issues for now for this coming season every year, right? Because we got to win now. It doesn't matter if we're here or anywhere else. You got to win, you got to win now. But anytime you can address an issue for now and also for the next couple years, that's a win-win. 
And so anytime you can do that, that's, that's, that's a big deal for us. Coach Simons obviously had connections with the guys coming from Liberty. You had the connections with the guys coming from Miami. How different were those conversations uh, compared to when you're meeting players for the first right. time? And how many of them reached out to you because of their familiarity with you and as opposed yeah. to you reaching out to them and saying that you've got a spot for a guy at a different one position or another? Yeah. Um, it's totally different because you you don't have to do the introduction part, you know, and you probably know their parents and all those kind of people in most cases. So, and there's a familiarity. They know how you coach. You know how they react to coach. All that stuff is kind of done. I think it says a lot about our coaching staff, the coaches on our roster from Miami or Missouri or Liberty, places that they had been for when players decide to go on the portal, they want to go play for you again. I mean, to me, that speaks volumes of the type of coaches we have on our roster because if it didn't go, they wouldn't want to come play again, right? They'd be going somewhere else. Uh, and in some cases, in most cases, I think they, in half the cases, I don't know, they probably reached out to us. I mean, once they went into the portal, you know, if you if you knew them, you're hopeful that you'll have a good chance just because of that familiarity. In a lot of cases, quickly they said, no, no, I'm, I'm very interested or no, that's where I want to be. Sometimes that simple. So. You mentioned in there the alignment between everybody in the school. Yep. Uh, how important has that been for the program and the future of the program in the school? I think it's big. I think it's a, a really big reason why I think our athletic program, especially our football program right now, is in a really good position um, to maybe seize the moment we're in because I know Dr. Turner is just doing everything he can to give all our athletic programs, specifically football, uh, all the resources we need to be successful. I mean, you just look no further than the facility he's allowing us to build with all our, our donors. And then uh, what, what David Miller and, and Rick Hart are doing too. I mean. It's big because it's not that way everywhere. And it hadn't always been that way probably here in the past, but it is now. And, and that's, uh, that's the first step to having a really good, stable, consistent program. One of the things Sonny said, of, Sonny Dyke said of his first one here was that what was in place here was better than when he was at Cal, Power 5 place. How has what is here compared to where you've been in the past? Yeah, it's been good. I, I think I've said this before when, when I got the job, I think, to some, at some point. I'm kind of a benefit of a little bit of a pickle jar effect. You know, I mean, started with Phil Bennett, and then you had June Jones, and then you had Chad Morris, and then you had Sonny. And each coach, you know, it was getting a little bit better from admissions to facilities to just all the things that it takes to have the support that you need and have that alignment. I think it just slowly got better and better and better. And so I was fortunate to get here at a time where it was getting probably at its best during that process. Hopefully it continues to get better every year. And then my familiarity here didn't hurt. And so, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think what he said was probably true then. I think it's still true now. From the last year and a couple months or whatever, it's probably been a little bit of a whirlwind. Has it, you know, has it kind of all settled down? And how much does signing a class like this like really like energize everyone? I mean, all the coaches up there were yeah. just. Definitely yeah. energizes you. I mean, I don't know how much things settle down. I mean, we did get a chance last week to kind of finally catch our breath. But, um, you know, in, in what we do and in the new world we're in, it, it never really stops. Um, and the way I look at it is when you bring in good players, it just raises the expectations. So just makes our job honestly harder. We have to go do it. Um, but that's what you want. And as a staff, we're kind of in the, in the weird moment of trying to catch our breath and refresh a little from that August 1 to February 1, kind of the hardest part of our years, right? At the same time, we're starting to build a new team right now. We start spring ball two weeks from tomorrow. And so you kind of catching your breath, but you're also jumping right into it. Um, maybe just not with the same pressure that comes with in season. But uh, like I said, you bring in good players, and we have high expectations of ourselves, so that helps. But yeah, it just means we need to go do it. Had some guys who had other visits scheduled and didn't go on them and committed right away. Mm -hmm. Some guys who said they felt like they still needed to go on that visit, but were pretty sure. What does that say about your guys' ability from you? all the way down to the players that they meet with, that once they get on campus, you kind of almost have them locked in a little yeah. bit. Yeah, well, I think it says a lot about our school. We have an incredible campus, the location here in Dallas. I think, you know, again, the support, the facilities, the things that are either here or coming, kind of check most of the boxes that you need to check to be in the game. And then I think after that, I think it just says we're not really selling a lot of stuff. We're just being real and genuine. Our staff is who they are. Um, that's who we want to be. It's not always for everybody. It's not like we win every battle. Um, but for guys to either shut it down or quickly shut it down, it, it got to tell you that what they saw, they genuinely felt and believed, uh, you know, and I think that's who we want to be and hopefully continue to be.
Kelger Gluster, obviously highly prolific high school career for a long time. His recruiting took a while to really mm -hmm. pick up. Um, what did you see in him ultimately? And why did you think, hey, this guy could play quarterback yeah. ultimately for us? Well, I mean, I watched his film and I thought he was really productive, you know, his junior year in Frisco. And then Coach Brewer went out and saw him, uh, him and Coach Woods, and they both really said, once you see him throw live, you know, he's a lot like a deer at Keene. He didn't have the height requirements. That's why his recruiting took a while, because it is what it is. I mean, people look at him and go, well, he's not over six foot. Eh, you better be really, really good. Well, it turns out he was really, really good. And that's what I remember Johnny and even Casey saying when they went and saw him, is Johnny said, hey, he's got some of those De'Eric qualities when you just see how he carries himself, how he acts with the players. He can throw it, he can run it. De'Eric had those big old strong legs. So I think that's kind of what we saw. And like, like he said in there a little bit, we've had positive experiences with guys like that. Take one more for Coach. Just Jamari and Carroll um, finished as a four-star for us. Yeah. Um, you guys showed that clip of him jumping over the guys. Uh, when you bring in a guy like that, when SMU's had this history mm -hmm. of producing receivers, do you kind of look at him and say, I, I, I could see him being the next one? Yeah, I mean, our reputation with receivers recently helps. Um, he's one of those guys, you know, when high school guys commit, you never know until they sign, right? But there's some guys like, I feel pretty good about him. There's other guys I don't know. And then there's other guys you go, man, we just got a really, really good player and people aren't going to stop. And so he would have been one of those guys who were like, man, we got to hold on to him all the way to signing day. And I think the fact that he wanted to come here um, probably speaks a lot of what he feels about what he can do here based on other receivers in the past. I do think he fits right into the style of guys we want to have, the Rasheed Rices, the James Prochets, the Cortland Suttons, you go on and on, like, and the guys we've also had in our system. I think, you know, from a physical standpoint, the traits he has, I think fit in really well.